since this is the, 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 the buffalo or bison gates, what I'm trying to do now is just to uh, put a sort of a stylized, very abstract bison head on here. We had a, an age group that was going from adolescence through puberty and into young adults. Those were the kids who came to work on it. So uh, we found some images from Indians that were specific to a ritual of passage through that age. And so we uh, used those as the basis for the, for the young people, the kids to draw and scratch through. It basically all started because of the invasive honeysuckle that exists on this nature preserve. And the fact that uh, Bob Weck is one of the biologists here at the college, and he's also my next door neighbor. So we got to talking about the honeysuckle, the invasive honeysuckle, how to get rid of it. He told me that if you cut it five years, if you cut it off the ground five years in a row, uh, you would kill it. And so I thought, wow, you know, we could use the honeysuckle and we could bend it and use that as an armature. And then we could use that as a, a waddle and daub technique with the adobe and we could make sculpture. We could start with the, the, the bison, uh, buffalo bison gates. And then as we move through the preserve, we can build things like, there's a small creek, so we're gonna build a bridge uh, across the creek using the honeysuckle. We're going to build uh, armatures. Maybe some of them may resemble bison laying out here in the, in the area that's designated as the wallow. We may build things that look more like uh, cocoons or beehives or whatever the students and I can come up with together. We're gonna do this every year, every spring. And so at any time, it'll be deteriorating and weathering away as we're building it up anew. And we, this year we got uh, drawing students involved, we got uh, sculpture and ceramics students involved, and uh, Bob's uh, biology students got involved. And uh, the three-dimensional design class located the exact position of it with uh, regard to the preserve. Um, the foundation of this is, uh, is adobe, which is uh, basically just stabilized earth. Uh, these terms can get fairly technical fairly quick, but adobe refers to the making of blocks using stabilized earth. And it's a mixture of soil or subsoil that has a, a very uh, high clay content to it. So it's, um, it's, it's not dirt, it's really clay. Mix that with cement, Portland cement. And we use Portland cement as a stabilizer. Uh, traditionally, it was done with uh, cow and animal dung, but uh, we decided to use cement. And then straw as a, a binding fiber, fibery kind of agent. I usually joke around and say, straw to taste, you know? So it just depends on uh, whoever's mixing it, really. But that's, that's the mixture. And then what we had in the beginning was plywood and two by four formwork all along here. And we had the buttresses coming out and staked out on the ground. And then we just rammed and pushed the adobe up against it. And we built the wall up and it tapered slightly as it goes up. And then that has to sit for a day or two until it hardens up and then we can pull the, the formwork off of it and then we have a, a foundation. Adobe is used all over the world in every, every kind of climate from Japan to Denmark to South America. And as long as you uh, keep the water off of it, 
it can last quite a long time. There are some adobe walls in, in Japan, for instance, that um, are thousands of years old. But uh, in some cases, like this one, we're just going to allow it to erode, you know, away. But if you saw the um, sticks sticking out of it on the, on the back side of this, those are uh, in reference to the scaffolding that, they, that uh, many cultures build right into the adobe. They'll use sticks like that and so that annual repair can be made easily. They'll throw planks up on it and then they can crawl up there and, and repair it. But I liked it just to, as a visual element, so that I'm using it here on the back side of this piece strictly as a visual uh, device. those different colors in there and the, you know, just the the sort of weathered worn I mean that's just so rich right there it's really beautiful One of the things that we tried to achieve was a contrast with the gates. We wanted uh, a contrast of forms, uh, the shape of it, so we had this really clean sort of cut look, and then we had this soft organic kind of look in the back. So there's, there's an inside and an outside kind of a relationship, and we wanted this uh, organic look to resemble and I think you could most evident over here. The, the sort of shapes that you might see if you were standing up next to a buffalo or a bison. So this is kind of uh, reminiscent, and I'll say only suggestive, of a bison body. And the, these elements here that are on the back side of it actually function as seating elements, so you can actually sit on them. And, uh, in this case, it becomes like a you know, reclining bench. You, know, you can kind of lean back and imagine yourself kind of laying on a, on a buffalo. And then you here you're gazing out at the buffalo wallow. That's, that's the actual area that the biologists have designated as the buffalo wallow. So here we are laying here on the buffalo, looking at the buffalo wallet. 